people. That'd be very difficult because you'd have to go basically raw to no. get rid of all this stuff. No, you don't. Okay, well that's <laughs> good. I'll, gi I'll, give, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Are we in danger of committing the same sin as Sodom and Gomorrah? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Welcome to LED Live. We're glad that you stopped by today. And uh, we have a guest today that is not a stranger to Little Light here. Eric Wilson, thank you so much for coming back it's and good to blessing see you us. Again, Hi, he's, Sandy. Hi, Brad. He's basically family. Uh, we talk all the time. So it's, it's awesome to have you come back on and bless us with yet another show. And uh, we welcome you back. Well, it, it's a blessing for me to be here. So I'm intrigued by today's topic here. You know, obviously holding out an apple is uh, is a bit of are we taking this uh, this sin? Are we are we are we taking the lies of the devil? What are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about appetite, and mm -hmm. we're going to talk about what that word means because there's a lot more there than most of us realize. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I hope that this will be a blessing. I know it will for those that are watching. Uh, so let's let's get started. Let's jump in. Mm. Appetite, Satan's strongest hold upon mankind. The Bible tells us something in 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God? The word God in Greek is theos, and it has two definitions, two primary definitions, deity and divinity. Mm. We are the temple of deity and divinity. Hmm. And it says, and that the Spirit of God dwells inside of each of us. Hmm. And then the Apostle Paul was inspired to tell us, if any man or woman defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple we are. Hmm. I grew up thinking, that's a scary verse. Hmm. God is going if to, you, if you defile my temple, I'm going to smash you. But that's not what the verse is saying. Hmm. There's another verse, I believe, in Hebrews and all through the Old Testament in Leviticus where it says, our God is a consuming fire. Mm. If you take a fire into your hands, how can you hold a fire and not be burned? Mm. If God, who is a consuming fire, dwells inside of our hearts, how can we have sin inside of us willfully mm -hmm. and it not be burned? Mm. So God is saying, I want you to realize that I'm inside of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. It's an amazing thing that the the body is is such a powerful machine that you can literally put poison, toxin, and mm -hmm. junk inside of it, and the thing still works. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that there there a lot of times is not an immediate judgment upon what you're putting in your body. So this is kind of one that I think that we need to to really dive in and it, it, it and and understand. So I'm excited that you're bringing this topic up because uh, it's not an easy one. It, it's not, but this touches every single person. I don't care if they're a churchgoer, if they're not, if they're an atheist, if they're a Buddhist. If, it doesn't matter who you are. Mm -hmm. This will speak to you. Mm. I'm going to show you something. This is a, a Time Magazine article, special health issue. It says our supersized kids. Y'all remember that movie a oh, number yeah. of years ago, yeah. Super Size Me? Mm -hmm. He changed the menu that McDonald's had. That's power. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think like McDonald's has seen an uptick in, in sales ever since it first started, right? It's always increasing. Yeah. And when that documentary came out, I think he took it down by 3%. Yeah. First time it ever That's like powerful. dipped, which is power. That is. America and many of the cultures in our modern world today are witnessing an unforeseen epidemic, one that is terrifying in its nature in the, and in man's apparent inability to bring it under control. We have sown in self-indulgence and the consequences we are sure to reap. Now mm. I wanna show you a couple of articles that really caught my attention. We would like to thank all of you who support this ministry through your donations and by buying merch from lightwear.shop. We cannot do this without you. And if you send in your pictures, we will put you on the show. And I want you to, I want you really focus on this because like on this Time magazine, they're showing childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. And that's a big issue right now. Mm -hmm. But I want you, don't 
be limited in your mind to thinking appetite and obesity, because mm. we're going to show there's something there that many of us have not realized. Mm. This is from CNN News, uh, their health program. It says the current state of childhood obesity in America. They showed that according to 2016 and 2017 data, Mississippi was rated as being the highest percentage of childhood obesity. They were at 26.1%. Wow. Mm. 26% of the children that live in Mississippi are wow. obese. One wow. out of every four. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. And I'm not judging Mississippi, but this is where we're at. Mm -hmm. Show you another one. This one really caught my attention. You can find this all over the news for the last 10 years. This is from a, a website called Task and Purpose. They're a military website. Mm. And you can find this on news from, um, from the military themselves, from the Army, from the Navy. Mm -hmm. They said the Department of Defense is a microcosm of our nation. We recruit from the nation. The Director of Health Promotions and Wellness at the Army Public Health Center said she told the New York Times, so the nation's problems are ours as well. Mm -hmm. If the nation is becoming obese, the military is saying this affects us. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, the military's proverbial belt has gotten tighter as the obesity rate has increased steadily <laughs> mm. in recent years. The 2018 report found that 17.4% of service members were now classified as obese. Wow, because uh, you don't really think about that in the military. Well, <laughs> I when I saw this, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I started doing research on the military, and for the last 10 years, they were saying, this is a huge issue. Hmm. They were actually, and they, they had, I don't remember where it was from, but they had a recent news uh, release, and they talked about the fact that the U.S. military said, we've got concerns that if the United States had to go to war again, we would be in trouble because we can't recruit people because they can't they can't even go through basic training. Wow. And I was like, well, my grandfather was in the military. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it was gung ho. I mean, you got to be like Clint Eastwood. You've got to be able to do 100 push ups. And mm -hmm. it's not that way anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think that speaks to the priorities of the country. I was just watching a video um, on YouTube and this woman was going through an article mm -hmm of a list of 30 or 31 foods that are banned in international countries, but are still allowed in the United States. Yeah. Skittles and these other things, just because these colors, these artificial flavors, Amen. they impact the body, even mm -hmm. causing cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, wow. she was saying, when you look at the healthcare system of the United States versus these other countries, a lot of these international countries actually pay for um, the, the healthcare of their citizens. Yeah. But the United States doesn't foot the bill mm -hmm. for people who are mm -hmm. sick. So not only is the economy growing because people are buying the foods when they get sick and go to the hospital, they're still having to pay for their own health care. Mm -hmm. Whereas these other countries, they're like, man, we don't want to pay for all these sick people. So let's just be more cautious about what we allow in our country and provide our citizens to eat. Same with their military, I bet. They want to keep their citizens healthy. Yeah. Sure, it might be for the reason of not wanting to pay, but still it's like it's good for, for the citizens as well. So if the uh, U.S. would hopefully get his priorities right Yeah, to That's, help keep yeah. the society healthy. I think it's fascinating. It all comes down to money. It always comes down to money. And yeah. Jesus said that too. He, he said you can either serve mammon or you can serve me, right? And so it, it's, it comes down to what you're going to, I mean, granted, I don't think I want <laughs> my hospital run like the DMV. Right. But at right. the same time, <laughs> I think that it's fascinating that it's always pointing back to money. Yeah. Is, is the primary motivator for everything in this world. Right, right. Yeah, you don't care if it's harming people, but you're going to put that product out there because it's cheap and lots of people are going to buy it. And, you know, many people are going to get addicted to it. And, yeah, there's no sort of like, you know, like, oh, man, this is really harming my fellow man. Like, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, we should have regulations on that, but <laughs> we're not going to go there. <laughs> Let me show you this other one. This is from the Centers for Disease Control. And this... Uh, in this article, they showed that the percentage of adults in the United States of America aged 20 and over with obesity was 42.5% from 2017 to wow. 2018. 42% of half. Americans over 20 years old are obese, wow. are classified as obese. Hmm. This is what got scarier. 
the percentage that included obesity and overweight in America between 2017 and 2018 was 73.6%. I believe it. That's terrifying. Oh, wow. yeah. Now, that being said, what we are sharing in this this message today is not just about obesity. Mm -hmm. That's what people think about when they think about appetite being a problem, mm -hmm. fat or obese. Mm -hmm. That's not the issue. Mm -hmm. There's a bigger issue, and that's what I want to show. Mm. This is a quote out of a powerful book called Councils on Diets and Foods, page 59. The controlling power of appetite will prove the ruin of thousands. For if they had conquered on this point, they would have had the moral power to gain the victory over every other temptation. Mm. But those who are slave to appetite will fail of perfecting Christian character. The continual transgression of the laws of God by man for over 6,000 years has brought sickness, pain, and death as its fruit. And as we draw near the close of time, Satan's temptations to indulge appetite will be more powerful and more difficult to resist. I mean, you, you, you've got to wonder, if Satan has had thousands of years to study man's reaction to anything, right? By the mm -hmm. time he goes to, to try and attempt to get Jesus to sin, the first go-to temptation is the <laughs> sin of eating something, you know, like, or, mm -hmm. you know, using food as that temptation. Uh, I, you got to think there's something powerful there. Yeah. There, there's something more than what we realize. And, and I, I don't know if you're going to have an answer for this, but I see that every single day we have these little tiny choices that we make. And if we're making, you know, bad choices that we know are harmful to our bodies, then all those little choices are basically conditioning you to basically make the wrong choice. And when something big comes, you're not going to make the right it's choice. It's almost like creeping compromise. Mm. If I compromise a little bit, the next step becomes easier. And mm. pretty soon I'm so far off the path, I don't even know where yeah. the path is anymore. Yeah. That's why I think fasting is so powerful. Mm. Is It's you going, no, 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 you're not in control. Uh, you know, my body's not in control. My mind is in control. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Oh, go ahead. Appetite takes different forms. It's not just food. I think all three uh, yes. temptations dealt with appetite. One was with food. The other mm. one was with pride. Yeah. Yes. And then the third was with worship. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. so mm -hmm. um, just broadening our perspective. Don't think that, hey, yes, I don't have right. an issue with food, so I should be good to go. Right, right, right. 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 Good yeah. point. And we're going to get there. But that That's mm -hmm. exactly what, what we want people to see. The scripture says... Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you. This is in 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Mm. Which we have of God, and we are not our own. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when I sit down to eat, I'm putting... I can never imagine Jesus sitting down and eating. After he got done with his disciples, he pushes back from the table. And he's like, oh, I ate too much. My belly hurts, I you know? A nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you would never see Jesus do that. Right. But yet I found myself doing that, even as a Christian, and thinking it's okay. Mm -hmm. It says, for, for we have been bought with a price, even the precious blood of Christ. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your mind, mm. which is God's. I've had a lot of Christians that tell me, well, it doesn't matter what you do in your body. It's God looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. Well, out of the heart are the issues of our life. Mm -hmm. What's in your heart manifest in your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the New Testament idea of like, you know, God uh, said that everything is is okay to eat at this point, you're right, you know? And, and it's like, you know, even Paul brings out the concept that, yeah, you can do whatever you want to do, but not everything is profitable to you. And so, you know, it's like, I think there's, yeah. a, there's a different connection there that I think people are reading into that statement. Yeah, I do too. Wait, he said, say it again. You, you said that the New Testament says you can eat whatever you want? Well, I mean, that <laughs> a lot of people in the New Testament kind of Christianity will say, oh, you I know, see. like everything vision? is, yeah, everything yeah. is made like, you know, we can eat anything now. And, and I think that, you know, you, if you're going to take that stance, then it wouldn't make sense that he would say, hey, look, not everything is, is going to be beneficial to you. And I think there are certain things that are definitely not beneficial to us. The Old Testament says don't eat pork, but we know of the New Testament. I mean, just looking at the scientific evidence of what's inside of the pork, mm 
Mm -hmm. I mean, you've seen the Facebook videos, yeah. right? Where yeah. you see the little bugs the crawling around yeah. and worms and stuff like that. Yeah. So we know it's not just necessarily a spiritual thing as, as, as much as it, it was advice to keep our, our bodies healthy. Yeah, and, and, and what, who is it that has that dream? Is Peter? It Peter. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. And Peter yeah. even yeah. interprets that later on and yeah. says, hey, look, this is talking yeah. about Gentiles. I wasn't talking about food. And, and yeah. people just people completely that missed that part. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I think that's really fascinating. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that out. <laughs> I threw that out there, but yeah, I, I shouldn't assume everybody's like, you know, <laughs> on that same. Here's another quote, you know, speaking about the, our bodies being the temple of God. This is in a book called Desire of Ages, page 161. It says, from eternal ages, it was God's purpose that every one of us, every created being from the bright and holy seraph or angel to man should be a temple for the indwelling of the creator. But because of sin, humanity ceased to be a temple for God. Darkened and defiled by evil, the heart of man no longer revealed the glory of the divine one. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that three times in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 6, 2 Corinthians mm. 6. It says mm. three times in the New Testament, we are the temple of God. Mm -hmm. If God says something three times, mm -hmm. he's really trying to get our attention. Mm -hmm. He wants us to realize that. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on and we're told Satan has made it his study to lay the temple of God in ruins, mm. to obliterate the image of God, of divinity in man. And by yielding to sin, men have become defiled and corrupted. Mm. Through sin, the temple of God, which God had builded for his own indwelling and glory was reduced to ruin, was fallen and in decay. Mm. So that means, and, and I used to, I've talked to you about this before. Back before I gave my life to Christ, I used to drink probably $200 worth of alcohol a week. Mm. When I was drinking, I couldn't see what I looked like. But if I saw myself now, mm -hmm. I mean, you can go by sometimes when you're driving through rough parts of the neighborhood in town mm -hmm. and you see people that are homeless or somebody that's drunk and they're laying there mm -hmm. with a beer bottle and they're vomit on... Mm. And you look at that and Satan is mocking God. He's saying, you made them to be a temple for you. What do you think about your temple? Mm -hmm. So he's trying to destroy us, not just spiritually, but even physically mm -hmm. in order to destroy what God has done. Mm -hmm. I wow. found this, this is an old picture. Mm -hmm. um, has appetite become the acceptable sin? Mm -hmm. It's almost like, you know, most Christians will say, look, I know God's Ten Commandments are important. Mm -hmm. You know, they still stand. But food doesn't have anything to do with, with sin. Mm -hmm. It's like, but we, we avoid or we totally are mm -hmm. blinded to all the verses in Scripture that talk about mm -hmm. what we put into our mouth and into our body. Mm -hmm. So this is, for a lot of people, become mm -hmm. the, the acceptable sin. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where we're going to change gears. We look at this picture of this man who's gorging himself. You know, he's got this young man on the right side of the screen who's, you know, feeding him the Twinkies or the, the little snacks. And then <laughs> you see his butler over on the left that's trying to pull his hand back from getting the glass of wine. And, you know, they're trying, one side is trying to prevent this man, the other side he's is trying to, him. yeah, enabling him. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a tendency to think about appetite is obesity or mm -hmm. overweight. But appetite is self-indulgence. Mm. Appetite affects all kinds of people, mm. not just people that are... I've never been overweight, mm. I mean, ever in my life. But I was in bondage to appetite for most of my life. Mm. I have never been overweight. And I would go, I'd go to church well, and sit down at a church dinner and eat four plates mm -hmm. and go home and not be able to do anything for the rest of the day because my belly was so full. Mm -hmm. What do they say? Skinny on the outside, fat on the inside. You know, so mm -hmm. you could look on the outside fine, but how are you mm -hmm. health-wise? <laughs> amen, mm -hmm. amen. Yeah. And that has, that's got a spiritual application too. Yeah. You can look good on the outside. Even that's kind of concerning. Like when you go to the doctor and they're like, oh yeah, you're, you're average. Mm -hmm. And sure, I guess on one side that's a compliment, but maybe it really isn't. Going back to the statistics that you were talking about, if 73%, right, yes. of the population is either overweight or obese, What's the average? Yeah, I don't want. I don't want the to be. The overwhelming is not healthy versus healthy. Right. So then, when you are saying that I'm average, that I don't think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've known people that are have uh, type two diabetes and they're not overweight. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Type two meaning. If I get this right, because I don't, I don't know it completely. But type yeah. two is the kind that you can prevent yes. depending on what you eat. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. But um, they're 
self-indulgence, I'm not making uh, any assumptions here, <laughs> but has caused them to be this way. My, my grandfather mm -hmm. had type two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. wow. So that, that helps each of us to look at this and say, it's not just people that are overweight. Mm -hmm. This is talking about each of us. Mm -hmm. um, does God care what time of the day that I eat? Does he want me eating at 12 o'clock at night? Does he mm -hmm. want me eating, you know, and I'm not saying for people that work third shift. I mean, that changes your schedule, but we've got to ask ourselves that. Mm -hmm. And this is funny because you see this lady gorging herself. And it's so probably bad. nighttime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this is always what happens afterward. Mm -hmm. Always. And mm -hmm. we're going to do another program. Maybe it'll be the next one that's going to deal with the science and sorcery mm -hmm. of appetite. And mm -hmm. we're going to show why people get addicted. We're not going to mm -hmm. go there on this one. Mm -hmm. But this is what happens. Mm. This is this is the same result as somebody that does cocaine mm -hmm. or heroin or mm -hmm. some drug. Mm -hmm. They want it, they can't resist the temptation, they yield to it, and then afterward there is this guilt. Remorse. Same thing with, with immorality or mm -hmm. sexual sin. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes someone's like, oh, I'm uh, it's fine because I don't feel those things, but the body always reacts. You know, the body doesn't have emotion, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Just like, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. like, oh, I'm starting to ache, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that coupled with sometimes That's a good guilt point. and remorse. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. Listen to this statement. This was written um, by a lady in 1914. She said, one of the strongest temptations that man has to meet comes upon the point of appetite. Hmm. In all ages, temptations appealing to the physical nature have been most effectual in corrupting and degrading mankind. Through intemperance, Satan works to destroy the mental and moral powers that God gave man as a priceless endowment. So intemperance leads to not being able to have the mental and moral power to fight spiritual battles, can to you, intercede for my family. Can you explain intemperance? Yes, yes, we'll get there. Okay. We're going to get there. A, a lack of self-control in all things. Mm -hmm. A lack of, of it's kind of like you see a lady at, at the Walmart or a man at the Walmart. Normally it's the mother and she's got a screaming two-year-old in the buggy that's pitching a fit because it wants the toy or it wants the candy. Mm -hmm. And rather than the mother disciplining the child, I don't mean beating, I'm just saying mm -hmm. bringing the child to the Lord in patience and in love, but in firmness, she allows the child just to act like it's in control. Mm -hmm. Intemperance is allowing the body to tell the mind what to do instead of the body being the servant of the mind. Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about that. The body is supposed to be the servant of the mind. Mm -hmm. And the Bible also says, let this mind be in us, which was in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if I am the body of Christ and he is my mind, mm -hmm. I should be in surrender, willing surrender to him. To him. Mm -hmm. right. hmm. It says, it is impossible for those who yield to Satan to appreciate things of eternal worth. Through sensual indulgence, Satan seeks to blot from every soul, from the soul, every trace of likeness to God. Mm -hmm. Sensual does not mean just sexual. Mm -hmm. Sensual means senses, mm -hmm. smell, taste, the, the hearing, mm -hmm. the feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So gluttony, we're just gonna look at a couple of examples of this. Mm. Super Bowl parties. Mm. I mean, people like to watch games and they'll sit around and you can watch, you can watch YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. People are just gorging themselves on pizza and whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about family get togethers? Mm -hmm. How about holidays like mm -hmm. Christmas oh, and Easter and Halloween and Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Do you know that is the, that is the scariest <laughs> thing is because we will sit down and give thanks to God for everything he's done for us and then gorge ourselves. And you know, almost everybody at Thanksgiving, they're all on the couch going, oh, I'm so full, I ate too so much. It was so great, <laughs> uh, so wonderful to be here and to gorge myself. And you know what shocked me? I was, one time I was at my grandmother's and all our family was there and I had just done that. I'm in the living room, I'm looking, everybody's just sitting around on the couch and talking and laughing and everything. And two hours later, almost everybody was going back in the kitchen to get more to eat. And you go, wait a minute, yeah, your belly is hurting two hours ago mm. and you're going back in the kitchen. Mind and I, over matter. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it going. Yeah. How's that? Mm. I, I'm still confused how that's physically possible. 
We're gonna we're gonna go in our next program on okay. the science and sorcery. We're gonna get into why, but and, I'm gonna try not to do that yet. And these things in and of themselves aren't necessarily bad. Right. It's it's what you get into while you're in these things that right. causes the problem. Right. You know, restaurants, all you can eat. Mm -hmm. You know, it's or if they bring you more than what you normally should be able to eat, and well, you feel like I got to clean my plate. Well, I don't know if it's because. America suffers from obesity that it's changed our restaurant habits as a country. But, you know, if you travel abroad and you go to Europe, you know, you order something and it's like little salad, one little baguette, <laughs> and you're <laughs> like, that's not going to fill me up. <laughs> and that's what they're used to. Yeah. You come to America and it's like you've got this supersized plate, yeah. it's mounded yeah. like this. You, you want know. the lunch portion or the yeah. dinner portion. Yeah, exactly, you know, and, and it's very interesting just observing it is an issue that we have in our problem, but also our restaurants cater to that kind of stuff. And it also has to look a certain way mm -hmm. with America versus. Have you mm -hmm. seen those uh, comparison videos of a uh, European McDonald's versus a U.S. No. McDonald's? No, tell us. For uh, in Europe, for their McDonald's, their fries, the ingredient list is potatoes and salt. Do you know what it is for the United States? Mm -hmm. It's like 15 ingredients oh, and a lot of it really? is just to make sure that's the, that's the fry is crispy and it's yellow mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you look at the European fry and it just, just looks like, yeah. you know, homemade fries. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of limp and yeah. all that, but I'm sure it tastes good. Yeah. 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 I'm just yeah. like, wow. So not only is it just, mm -hmm. you know, the portion, it also has to look a certain way, but for it, in order for it to look a certain way, you have to put in all these preservatives and things. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's concerning. That's weird you said that because if it has to look a certain way, it's engaging another sense. Mm. Mm. Right. So the sense, the, the smell, the way it looks, the way it tastes, it indulges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna try my best not to get into why, but we, we will do that on our next program. Um, oh, just for those who are fact checking me, it's actually three, potatoes, salt, and oil. But yeah, okay, go. go ahead. <laughs> also church dinners. Mm -hmm. You know, a yeah. lot of churches mm -hmm. have fellowship dinners or potluck dinners afterward. Mm -hmm. That's one of the easiest places to overeat mm -hmm. because there's all that there and you sort of excuse it because it's at church. Mm -hmm. You know, God's going to, he'll wink at this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if I overeat. Mm -hmm. So this is the question that I've had a lot of people ask me. Mm -hmm. And that, that I struggled with answering until Christ gave me the victory. Mm -hmm. Is food really a salvation issue? Mm -hmm. I've had so many Christians, even in our own churches, mm -hmm. Tell me, food's not a salvation issue. Mm -hmm. And you know what the Lord brought to my mind one day when someone said that? What caused Adam and Eve to fall mm -hmm. and the entire human race to be lost? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It was food. And it wasn't a pig. It wasn't a bacon double cheeseburger. <laughs> it wasn't a, 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 a huge heaping mound of ice cream sundae. Mm -hmm. It was a vegan, organic piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. one Which bite. is interesting because that it was symbolic of obedience. So anything Amen. linking to a salvation issue, food, what have you, it's linked to obedience. And Amen. the Bible has a lot to say about food. So of course food is a salvation issue. Mm -hmm. But I wanna pause here. Can you explain what salvation issue means just because we have a broad audience mm -hmm. watching? Some people will ask if something is a salvation issue is, if I indulge in this, will it keep me out of heaven? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the answer always, if can be answered, no, it's not. You're going to default to doing that action. Exactly. It's yeah. like, we're just human nature is like, what is the least I can get away with to be able to like make it still in yeah. that? Yeah. Toe the line. What I think is fascinating about this is what Genesis says about how uh, about Eve ate the fruit. What it all comes down to is always, do I obey my senses or do I obey what God says? Because it says in, in Genesis 3 here, it says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good, she saw it with her eyes, right? And, and pleasing to the eye and also very desirable for gaining wisdom. So desirable, hey, I want this. It's the desire I have. So when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to, do we obey our senses and what we think and what we desire, or do we obey what God says, what we know, what we have studied? That's a good point. I'm glad you mm -hmm. brought that out, Brian. Mm -hmm. So let's just look at some examples in Scripture where appetite was an issue. Mm -hmm. The first one we just talked about, Adam and Eve and the fall of mankind in Eden. Mm -hmm. Noah's day, mm -hmm. and we're going to show this. 
Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm-hmm. That's where we, what you were talking about. You know, are we going to fall temptation to that same mm-hmm. sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? Remember Esau, mm-hmm. Israel, when they were lusting after the flesh pots of Egypt. One of the other examples, and we're coming forward in history, was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm-hmm. Those men denied their senses so that their minds would be clear, so that they could resist. They were stuck in the middle of the most sensual culture mm-hmm. the world has ever known, Babylon, mm-hmm. and they were Christians. Mm-hmm. How did they not fall to temptation? Mm-hmm. It was because they had power over a simple mm-hmm. thing as what I eat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So not compromising on that simple thing gave them strength. The other things were easy temptations to resist. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's funny because you brought this out. Man fell with Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. The first temptation that came to Christ was appetite. Mm -hmm. The very first temptation that Christ overcame was the one that Adam had fallen to. Mm -hmm. Another quote from that book, Counsels on Diets and Foods. Satan comes to man as he came to Christ with his overpowering temptations to indulge appetite. The devil well knows his power to overcome man upon this point. He overcame Adam and Eve in Eden upon appetite, and they lost their blissful home. What accumulated misery and crime have filled our world in consequence of the fall of Adam? Entire cities have been blotted from the face of the earth because of the debasing crimes and revolting iniquity that made them a blot on the universe. Indulgence of appetite was the foundation of all their sins. Wow. By, let me think how to put this. Like you were talking about intemperance, Kendi. I can remember when I was a partier, when I was young, like in you know, 20, 21, we used to go clubbing, you know. I didn't care about dancing, but it was a place to meet girls and you could drink and you know, club. We knew that it was easier to get a girl to give up her inhibitions if you could get her to drink. Mm-hmm. Well, that's intemperance. Back back in the 1800s and 1700s, they had whole temperance movements that were trying to do the abolition of alcohol. They wanted to get rid of alcohol. Many people in the United States wanted to make alcohol totally off limits. Mm-hmm. But that sin of indulging intemperance opens the door for the next sin of yielding to sexual sin. Mm-hmm. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3-5, through 5, Peter says, Know this also, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking or living after their own lust, their own carnal desires, and saying, Where is the promise of Christ's coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation until now. Hmm. We hear people saying that all the time. Hmm. I hear people even in churches say that. Mm -hmm. We don't know if Jesus is coming back soon. I mean, it can be another 100 years or another Mm -hmm. 500 years. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the Lord tells us. But this they willingly are ignorant of, that the world that then was being overflowed with water, the flood, perished. But the heavens and earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store reserved unto fire against that day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly men. Hmm. So this is telling us the end is going to come. The judgment is going to come. Not only are you being judged, but is judgment being poured out. Judgment is poured out on ungodly men and women. Now listen to what Jesus said. But as in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, Kendi, what's that say? Uh, They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the very day that Noah entered into the ark. Isn't it funny that Jesus starts off and he says they were eating and drinking. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, I mean, you've got to eat to live. That's not what it means in Greek. In the Greek context, it means self-indulgent gluttony. Mm -hmm. They were overeating, Mm -hmm. over drinking. They were drinking things that God had forbidden, Mm -hmm. things that had been, you know, fermented, alcohol. Mm -hmm. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So Jesus says eating and drinking was the one of the problems that caused the sins during the flood. Overindulgence. 
Then in Luke 17, Jesus goes on and says, Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, that was Sodom and Gomorrah, they did eat and drank. They bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot and his family went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Mm. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Mm. Noah's day, it was eating and drinking. Mm. Lot's day, it was eating and drinking. Christ is trying to tell us something. Mm -hmm. In Malachi chapter 3, listen to what it tells us. He says, Behold, I will send my messenger. And the word messenger means an angel or a message. I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord or the sovereign king whom you are seeking shall suddenly come to his temple. Remember, we are the temple of God. Mm -hmm. And it says the king is coming. It says he shall suddenly come. That word means unexpectedly, like a thief. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. Mm. There are Christians right now that are praying for God to pour out the latter rain of his spirit. Mm -hmm. Do we want Christ to come in his fullness through his spirit and dwell inside of us? He's like a refiner's fire. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 13, it says, Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his anger. And I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. So here we've heard about the flood, we've heard about Sodom and Gomorrah, and now Isaiah is equating Babylon's destruction to the same thing that caused Sodom and Gomorrah's destruction by fire. And this is the part that you opened with. People ask about Sodom and Gomorrah and they immediately think about homosexuality or lesbianism or perversion mm -hmm. or pedophilia or whatever. But listen to what it says in Ezekiel 16, verse 49 and 50. Behold, this was the iniquity of Sodom. Pride fullness of bread and abundance of idleness was in her and her daughters. Mm. There was no fear of God in them. Yea, they were haughty and they committed abominations before me as if I could not see them. I see. Mm. So we focus on the effects, but this is the root. This is what led them. That's so right. Yeah, there you uh, go. The fullness of bread is what led to all the other results that you just described. The foundation. Yeah. So it's like, for me, if I go to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, you've got this problem here, take this medication. I'm like, yeah, but just masking the problem. I want, yeah, I don't want a Band-Aid. I want to fix the hole in the boat. Mm -hmm. So here, God is saying, look, if you want to get rid of these problems, you've got to get to the root. Mm -hmm. You've got to get the root out of there. or Otherwise, the cancer is just going to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. If I'm still eating the red number 40 or whatever in the mm -hmm. Skittles or M&Ms, mm -hmm. the cancer is not going to go away. Can I read something yes, go from ahead. Isaiah that I think is really interesting? This is talking about the end um, <clears throat> after God is, is pronounced, he is righteous, he is wonderful, and everything's put back to normal. This really, really stood out to me. Um, and I'm going to read three, ver three verses here. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall, exalt, shall be exalted in, in judgment. And God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lamb feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Wow. So isn't that interesting? <clears throat> it even says that, you know, after this whole thing is put put back together, the God says the fat ones, where they were, the strangers strangers will eat in their place because they are no longer here. In Bible times, and in, in back in, in, in the olden days, it was sought to be, you, you looked wealthy if you were big. Yeah. In fact, now today when you see the, the cover of um, you know, those magazines you see when you're checking out the grocery store, right? <laughs> well, what do you see as the, the womanly figure on the front of those magazines? It's really skinny, really, and, and we consider that beautiful. Back then, they considered 
beautiful, plump, and large because it meant you had a lot of money mm -hmm. and you were very wealthy and you could afford to feed yourself. God says, no, that's not the way. Amen. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? That mm -hmm. is interesting. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. So Malachi talked about this messenger that God was going to send before the king returns. Mm -hmm. We know that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. In Revelation chapter 14 and Revelation 18, it talks about there being three angels that come down from heaven right before the second coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look what it says about the second angel. And this is referenced in Revelation 14. I'm going to read from Revelation 18. It says, After these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. For she is become, what's that say, Candy? The habitation of devils. And the stronghold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hate-filled bird. Mm -hmm. Babylon is full of demons. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, which is God's people, are filled with his spirit. Mm -hmm. Then look what it says. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her What's that say, Brad? Fornication. All right, that word. Pay it, mark that down. If you're watching this, mark that word down, fornication, and watch what the Lord shows us. Mm. They're, they've drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Mm. And there's different ways that we could look at this, but since we're focusing on appetite, keep that in mind. Mm. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. And this is not just talking about Rome or someplace in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. He's saying, come out from the world. Mm -hmm. There's two kingdoms, Babylon and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You want to be part of Jerusalem, not part of Babylon. Mm -hmm. He says, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins and receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Hmm. And there followed another angel, Revelation 14 says, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Hmm. The word wrath, when you look it up in Greek, it means to breathe hard or passion. It's like panting after, it's like a dog in heat or a donkey in heat. Mm -hmm. The wine of her passion of her fornication. She's longing mm. for this fornication. Her desire, her lust. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. It's not just, because I used to read that, the wine of the wrath. Why does it say yeah. wrath? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about just the wine of her fornication? But it says mm -hmm. the wrath of her fornication. Mm. Now look at the word fornication. This is in Greek from that text. The Greek word is 4202 in Strong's Concordance, and the Greek word is pornea. That's where we actually get the, the word, word pornography, mm -hmm. is huh. from that word. And this is what the word means, harlotry or idolatry. Its root word is 4203, which means to act the harlot, to indulge in unlawful lust or carnal desires, to practice idolatry. Hmm. And that comes from 4204, which is a strumpet, an idolater, or a whore. What's a strumpet? I know. <laughs> it, it's, it's a flirt. Oh, it's, okay. it's, a, it's almost like a woman that, she maybe she doesn't do it, but she makes you think she wants to. Mm. She's a tease. Yeah. Sort of. Or yeah. a man. Yeah. Or a man. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, There's, there's a true. lot of that this goes around true. both sides. But the point being here is, is that it says Babylon had made the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Yeah. And when we look at fornication, to indulge in unlawful lust or longing or desires, mm. to pant after something. Mm. Hebrews chapter 12 says, follow peace with all men and holiness, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's a, that's a strong statement. Holiness, without which no man or woman shall see the Lord. Watching diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. So if somebody says, I can't overcome that, 
you're failing of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. The word grace doesn't just mean mercy. Mm -hmm. It means the divine influence of God upon your heart. That's what the word means in Greek. Mm -hmm. Then it says, lest there be any root of bitterness. The word rebellion and bitterness are synonymous in Mm -hmm. the the Hebrew and the Greek. Mm -hmm. Lest there be any root of bitterness springing up. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau was, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Mm. You and I are sons and daughters of God. Mm. Are we willing to sell our birthright for one bite of food? Mm -hmm. Esau did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Food. Mm -hmm. People will say food is not a salvation issue. It was for him. Mm. In 1 Samuel it says... Samuel was speaking to, the, uh, to King Saul, and he says, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Mm-hmm. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, mm-hmm. and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness to resist God is iniquity and idolatry. When you look up the word rebellion, that's the Hebrew word, mm-hmm. bitterness. Mm. bitterness so we look at Esau and when I first read this I was thinking Esau there's no mention in the Bible of him committing fornication like immorally sexually Mm -hmm. but God says him choosing his belly rather than choosing to obey God Mm -hmm. was fornication Mm -hmm. he tells us that in the Old Testament he says you adulterers and adulteresses Mm -hmm. why are you cheating on me Mm -hmm. You've chosen another. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and chapter 10. Listen to what the Lord says in the New Testament. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats. And the word meats there is foods. Mm. But God shall destroy both it, the belly, and them, the foods. For the body is not for fornication, Mm. but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. I mean, that's really interesting that it, that it keeps kind of circling around that concept. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like, I don't know, you, you would think that it would just be like, you know, whatever you do, whatever actions you take, you know, do that. But the fact that it mentions eat and drink, that's a significant part of who we are. That's right. You know? And I've had people tell me, well, as long as I'm doing it to the glory of God, it's okay. And you're like, are you bringing glory to God? Mm. Yeah. Are you acting God-like when you eat too much? When you, mm. dear Lord, please bless this food that I know has got stuff in it that's bad for me. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to the point in my life where I can't pray over food if I know that what's in there is going to destroy God's temple. Mm. Because God lives in here. He gave me this. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to die on the cross to give me a life today. Mm -hmm. Dear God, please bless this red number 40. Mm -hmm. And God is thinking, Mm -hmm. he's not mad, but he's just like, Eric, where's your heart? I'm like Esau. Luke 17, Jesus said, remember the kingdom of God is within you. If I won't let Christ, who's the word of God, reign inside my heart, Mm -hmm. He's like, don't you remember my kingdom is inside you? Who else is on the throne? Mm -hmm. The apostle Paul goes on and he says, But many live of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, Mm -hmm. whose end is destruction and whose God is their belly Mm -hmm. and whose glory is to their shame. Remember it says, do all to the glory of God. Mm-hmm. They say, I'm glorifying God. He says, they're glorious to their shame, who mind, whose affections are on earthly things rather than eternal. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's interesting. Sorry, I'm still stuck on red 40. What's wrong with red 40? <laughs> red one red, of red number 40 is a, a food dye that they know causes cancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? They and, know and it beyond five. those two. Which, which one? Are What's the other one? Yellow five. I didn't know that one. Which, I mean, and you think these are just colors, but no, they're chemicals that do lead to cancer, and that's in um, Skittles, even coffee creamers. Still to this day? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, still, this, in this country, I, I but there's M&M Skittles in other states, in other... Mountain Dew has a lot of yellow fiber. In other countries, and they just change uh, the, the ingredient. So it's still the same color, but it's a different ingredient. But, you know, Red 40 is cheap. Who cares about people's health, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. I no, did. no, that's fascinating. I just know, I didn't know anything about... It. It's, it's interesting that you bring that up, though, because my mother's close friend is actually allergic to a red 40. She can't have anything with red 40. Wow. In it. Praise she the will Lord. swell up and all this other <laughs> stuff. And so I always, I always remembered that. And so when you said red 40, I was like, oh, that's Damn. what Marilyn had. Wait, mm-hmm. what's wrong with red 40? Mm-hmm. She must have fun at the grocery store. Like yeah. looking at all those labels. Oh, and Do you know what I have found for me? I look at it and I say, did God make that? If he didn't make it, I don't need to eat it. Mm-hmm. If it's got some name on it that I can't pronounce, it's funny because you can look at some stuff even from other countries and you're like, well, that, that's a real food. Mm-hmm. Boy, you're but attacking. then you can look at some other stuff that you go, somebody came up with this in a lab. I don't want to eat it. You're attacking a lot of veggie meats right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you, I know. That'd be very difficult because you'd have to go basically raw to no. get rid of all this stuff. No, you don't. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll, give, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. And, and don't anybody get mad at me, but just give you an example. I don't eat meat. I gave the meat up when I was probably 23, 24, and I, I've been a lot healthier since I did. But before that, I ate anything that, that wouldn't run faster than me. Mm. I mean, if I, if I <laughs> yeah. Mm. Anyway, when I first was like making that transition off of meat, I used to buy some burgers, and I'm just gonna use like, like a bo- Boca burger or something. Mm. They've got like the number one ingredient in it is gluten. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, okay, that's not the best thing in the world for me. Mm-hmm. And then it's got all this other stuff and salt and oil and MSG and MSG under 300 different names. And, <laughs> yeah. um, well, then I found another company called Amy's, and I'm not doing a sales pitch, but they make a, a veggie burger that has no gluten in it. It has no tofu in it. It has, all it is is vegetables. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and it's organic. Mm-hmm. I eat that, it tastes even better than the other one, and I'm, I'm at least taking something that, hey, God made this. Fascinating. Huh. I don't want to eat something that was developed in a lab. I mm-hmm. want to eat something that came off of a tree or out of the ground or, you know, that was meant to be eaten. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't want to go into that. Mm-hmm. We're going we're gonna to show some clips, um, hopefully in our next program, of some food, what do they call it, food scientists, mm-hmm. and what they do to actually make food taste the way it tastes. And when you find out what they do, it's it's shocking. Yeah. Jude chapter 1. It says, Remember ye the words which were spoken unto us before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How there should be mockers in the last days who walk or live according to their own ungodly desires. These are they who separate themselves. They are sensual, mm-hmm. not having the Spirit. If you look up the word sensual in Webster's, mm-hmm. it means gratification of the senses, the indulgence of appetite, mm-hmm. fleshly, devoted to the pleasures of sense and appetite, voluptuous, lewd, or carnal. Mm-hmm. That's our world today. Intemperance of any kind is the worst sort of selfishness. Those who truly fear God and keep His commandments look upon these things in the light of reason and religion. How can a man or woman keep the law of God, of divinity, which requires a man to love his neighbor as himself and yet indulge in temperate appetite, which benumbs the brain, weakens the intellect, and fills the body with disease? Intemperance inflames the passions and gives loose rein to lust, and reason and conscience are blinded by the lower passions. Hmm. Wow. You can really see that. You ever see someone or a group of people argue over the last piece of broccoli? Mm. But what about if it's a chicken wing? You know <laughs> right, what I mean? Right. Oh, well, you're right. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Or like, you know, the, the church line, as you were saying, like praying over the Red 40, but even saying a prayer after arguing in the line because you want such That's and a such a point. food and things like that. And it brings up these texts and Proverbs and Psalms. You know, the, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears a prayer of the righteous. And if I regard regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And that goes from the minute prayer to the biggest prayer. Amen. And it affects all areas of life. So this, the, this is just as important as any other mm. sin. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Here's another statement from Councils on Diets and Foods, page 150. Satan is constantly on the alert to bring the race fully under his control. 
his strongest hold, his stronghold on man is through appetite. Mm -hmm. And this Satan seeks to stimulate in every possible way. Mm -hmm. The artificial flavors, the all the MSG, all that stuff. Satan does everything he can to cause people to be intemperate because if he can get them to yield to that sin, the other ones come easy. Mm -hmm. hmm. Faithful in the little things, huh? Yes. <laughs> Now I want to show you a couple more as we close. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm. Be not deceived. That means by your pastor, by yourself. Hmm. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators nor idolaters. Remember when we looked at what fornication was and what it was involved in? Food. Mm -hmm. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards. People will say, I don't drink alcohol. Let me tell you something. If you take a child and you give them a bowl full of crispy whatever, Fruit Loops or whatever and milk. My wife is a, a principal of a school. She's been in education in public education for 20 years. She said, Eric, I have almost all the teachers in grades first through grades four. They all complain because the children come in and they're crazy mm -hmm. for the first couple hours of school. Do you know why? Because when you take sugar and milk and you mix them in the human stomach, within a few hours, they turn to alcohol. That's right. Mm -hmm. It huh. says neither drunkards. Mm -hmm nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm. You can become drunk by overeating or eating the wrong mixtures of food. Hmm. If, if food sours in your stomach, it becomes like vinegar, which is the next step to alcohol. Hmm. And then the Bible gives us promise. And such were some of you. Hmm. I was that way. Hmm. But now you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So there's an expectation for change. Amen. You're not just staying the same. There's not God not caring. Mm -hmm. Amen. He wants progression. He wants change. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is that verse that we mentioned earlier. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Mm -hmm. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, mm. but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, and I so fight, not as one that beateth or punches the air, mm -hmm. but I keep my body under and I bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached the glad tidings to other, I myself should be cast away. Mm -hmm. That was the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Christ, in behalf of the race, was to conquer appetite. Mm -hmm. That's a key if you want to overcome. Mm -hmm. That's the key. On behalf of the human race, he conquered appetite. Mm -hmm. That's why that temptation was faced, with, why he was faced with that. Mm -hmm. By enduring the most powerful test on that point, he went without food and water for almost six weeks. Mm. Not one drop of water for that's six crazy. weeks. That's Now, how would you answer that to say that that's not humanly possible? It's not humanly possible. Mm. Which means it... God really like... was in Christ reconciling mm. the world unto himself. Mm. It's not humanly possible. Mm. Mm. But, you know, God never intended to leave us as merely human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's human nature. I'm only human. Well, don't stay that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Christ came to make us partakers of the divine nature. Mm -hmm. And divine nature is not divine character. It includes character, but it includes so much more. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to go that long because he felt my temptations to appetite. Mm -hmm. He felt your temptations and your temptations. Mm -hmm. And he felt those temptations and he said, I'm going to go farther. I'm going to go another day so that I conquer this completely. Wow. So that everybody that believes on me and lets me into their heart, I, my victory will be theirs. Mm -hmm. It is not Jesus' will that we should be placed at a disadvantage in the conflict with Satan. 
He would not have us intimidated and discouraged by the assaults of the serpent. Be of good cheer, he says, I have overcome the world. Mm. For me, I was like, when I was wrestling with appetite, I was like, I got angry at God. And I'm talking to him because I was like, David did that. I was like, I know you overcame, mm. but I'm not overcoming. Mm. So how does you overcoming help me overcome? Mm. And the Lord was like, I'm standing at the door of your heart. Mm. If you'll open the door, and I'm the word of God, mm. Jesus says, mm -hmm. if you open the door to me, the word of God, mm. I will come into you. And I've overcome and I've overcome. So if I come into you, it's like Oprah Winfrey. Well, that spirit came into me and I did this. Or Denzel Washington or yeah. Robin Williams or Keanu Reeves. When the spirit came into me, my thoughts changed. Mm -hmm. My strength changed. Mm -hmm. My abilities changed. And Jesus says, if I come into you, my thoughts will be your thoughts. Mm -hmm. My strength will be your strength. My faith will be your strength. My victory becomes your victory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Let him or her who is struggling against the power of appetite look to the Savior. Remember what Jesus said? Look unto me and be look ye and saved. Look and live. Look to the Savior in the wilderness of temptation. See him in his agony upon the cross as he exclaimed, I thirst. He has endured all that it is possible for us to bear and his victory is ours. Mm. Jesus rested upon the wisdom and strength of his heavenly Father. He declares, the Lord God will help me. That's how he overcame. When he was faced with temptation, he said, yeah, but thus saith the Lord. The Lord God will help me. Thus saith the Lord, I shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Therefore shall I not be confounded. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. Mm -hmm. Behold, the Lord God will help me, Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Pointing to his own example, Jesus says to each of us, Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Amen. Amen. Wow. Powerful. Man. Amen. Well, Eric, what a, what a blessing, man. And, you know, this is not an easy topic to bring up. You know, there's a few things that you, 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 you just have to be very careful. <laughs> talking yes. about people's plate, don't touch their plate, you know. And, uh, you know, it's good, though. We're not talking about it. God's talking about it. That's what I really appreciated that's about true. this is, you know, you brought it to the Bible you, and, you, and you really showed that, you know, this has been a struggle in a lot of different people's lives throughout the history of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and I believe the same is for us today. And so thank you for, for bringing some clarity on this topic. I'm sure there is definitely some food for thought. I don't mean that by just a pun, but um, we hope you guys were blessed by today's show. And you got to check out the next show we're going to do with Eric because we're going to get to the science a and little bit. The science and the sorcery behind appetite. What makes it have yeah. such a stronghold? How is Satan using the chemicals in the human body to get us? Wow. So thank you for stopping by. I'm very curious of your comments. Please leave them below. And uh, we just thank you guys for checking out today's show. And Eric Wilson, thank you for coming by. Um, if you want to check out more uh, work from Eric, his, his ministry is Isaiah Ministries and he's got his youtube page we'll put a little link to his page as well down there and uh eric's traveled around and spoken internationally for a while on a lot of these topics so check out his ministry he's got a lot of great material and uh we hope that you were blessed by today's show like this if you like it give it two thumbs up if you want to share it please do share it and we just thank you guys that have prayed for this ministry, supported this ministry, donated Amen. to this ministry. Amen. You've yes. literally kept our lights on so that we can go around and share the light with others. Thank you and God bless. Amen. There has been very few movies in the history of the world that have completely changed our world. And in 1999, a movie titled The Matrix hit the world stage. These stories are often told and seen over and over again. Is it simply just to make money? Or is there something more nefarious behind it?